Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to talk about some of the brand new annuals from Proven Winners that will be out in 2024. Uh, so some of those plants that you can expect to see at your garden centers this next growing season. And this is going to be a bit of a roundup of our experience growing these. We've shown them to you in past videos. We grew them this last spring, late spring, summer, fall. So I just wanna share our experience with you and some of my thoughts on these plants. And as a quick side note, we did have a call with Proven Winners a week or two ago at this point, uh, talking about some of the brand new plants for 2025. You know, in the plant and growing industry, you have to start things so early because you have to give people a chance to grow things on and all of that business. So it's kind of exciting to see what's coming down the pipeline and we will be able to share some of those details with you soon-ish, maybe like late winter, spring time, I'm hoping. So let's just jump into my list. I've got quite a number here that I want to get through. The first one I put on the list is my absolute favorite. Of all the ones that we grew, this is my favorite one to look at, my favorite one for performance. It's a Supertunia Saffron Finch. I just, there's something about that kind of cheerful yellow, but it's soft at the same time. It reminds me a little bit of the Supertunia Limoncello, a little bit brighter though, and much better performance. I feel like the growth habit was thicker, denser, there were more flowers, it held up to budworms better. You know, we do try to spray our Supertunias and Superbells on a weekly basis with BT to help control the budworm. It's not something that everybody deals with, but we deal with it here in our area. And if we don't spray them, those little, they're little moths that lay their eggs in the plants. And then when they hatch, they're the caterpillars, they eat the buds of the plants. So you end up with no flowers if you don't spray them. You end up with a green, healthy looking plant, but no flowers, which we're planting these for flowers. So anyway, I noticed that these held up to any kind of budworm issue a lot better than some of the other varieties do. And the color is just so nice. It's bright enough to where I feel like it would hold its own with a hotter color palette, but it's soft enough to where it blends with my my uh, preferred color palette, which is more purples, pinks, and you know that softer, more pastel look. You know, we had these planted both in a container, a hay rack actually, along our fence line, and we planted some in the ground, and they were equally as beautiful and performed equally as well in both locations. Uh, and both of them got full, full sun. And I think that that is really key to having a really nice super tunia and having good performance from them. I do believe that in southern climates they will be more on the creamy yellow side of things than uh, maybe as a vibrant in a cooler climate. The next one surprised me. So I'm not usually a fan of highly contrasting colors in a bloom. And the Super Tunia Hoopla Vivid Orchid has that bright pink with the white edge. They call it a Picketty flower. And at first I thought, oh, I don't know if I really like this. I tip typically don't like that kind of color pattern. But let me tell you what, this one grew on me through the season. And I think it might have had something to do with its performance in the landscape and in containers. We had it in the hay racks again, and I planted a few in the landscape. And it just, it kind of blew me away with its growth habit, how many flowers it had. I do believe we have some pictures and or video of where I had it in the ground. And it was just kind of an afterthought. I think I had like six or seven plants left from uh, the project we were working on before. So I thought, well, I want to pop these in the ground and see what they do. And they just, they just uh, formed this massive carpet of pink and white. And it was really pleasant. And it's something that I'll actually repeat plant, I think, um, and which did surprise me. And the thing about these two is that the pattern on these was very consistent. I didn't notice any variations. The color on the more aged blooms turned more of a lavender. So it deepened a bit. And I thought that was really pretty. But as far as the pattern of the white around the edge, it was very consistent throughout the whole plant. I'm just now realizing my list is just kind of a mess. I'm Trying to, let's put all the super tunias together, shall we? Number three on my list is a super tunia Bermuda Beach Improved, which this one, I have to say, this was Aaron's favorite. He loved the color, the, the vibrancy of it. Um, I actually preferred the Bermuda Beach unimproved in terms of color only. The improvements for me in this one is definitely the growth habit. It was much more robust, much denser. I noticed the older one had more of a spindly growth habit. It had a hard time keeping up with other plants if you put it in a mixed container, but I did like the softer color of the old one a little bit better because as you know, I like a little bit softer colors, but I think that the improved color actually matches the name better because it's a very 
bright, vibrant coral pink, a very warm pink, which goes with the name Bermuda Beach just beautifully. Um, and again, that was Erin's definite favorite color. Um, so I had that planted in the hay racks and in some containers uh, in another location in our garden. And they really were uh, a vast improvement on, on growth for sure. And just how aggressively they grew. They're not like a Vista Super Tunia and that they don't get, you know, this big, but it was very thick and it just, it did trail over the container beautifully. And the leaf to uh, bloom ratio, like the blooms were very high. You didn't see very much of the leaf of this plant. The next one is a super tunia that I'm excited about called Mini Vista Ultra Marine. It will remind you of the super tunia Royal Velvet, which has always been a favorite of mine, and they have improved that one through the years as well. Uh, but this one has a smaller flower, and it's really good for landscape performance. I planted some in the hay racks, but also some around the chicken coop, and I was very happy with the color consistency because I noticed like in the super tunia Mini Vista Indigo, it has a, an array of colors you know throughout the bloom's life uh, it would range from a very uh, deep kind of purple to a lavender to almost a white purple which sometimes that's a really fun thing to have and you you know kind of want that variation but sometimes you want the flower to maintain the color that you know you expected it to when you first planted it and this one does that it brings that deep purple nice mounding uh, habit but also spreads out nicely and it just plays really well with others I felt like and I just for me the consistency of color is is pretty huge so I really appreciated that about this plant I also felt like if you put that one up against the mini vista midnight which is a new one for 2023 I believe um, that was a deeper color for sure like it's almost so dark it's black that one has a very pancake kind of growth habit. It's very flat, forms a very flat carpet while this one does a little bit more mounding, which, you know, there's different uses or different situations where you want something that either grows taller or stays shorter. So each one has their use, but it's kind of fun to see the differences there. The last Super Tunia is the Mini Vista Sweet Sangria, which is actually a replacement for the Mini Vista Sangria. This one has a better growth habit, performance, and a larger flower. So we had this one planted in the hay rocks and it performed beautifully beautifully, full of color, very vigorous. I never felt like I had to um, trim any of it, though I didn't trim any of these that I've talked about. Um, and they're also um, all self-cleaning. You do not have to deadhead any of these. In fact, we didn't deadhead anything on this entire list that I have here. Uh, so that's one of the other benefits of these flowers is that the maintenance is really very low. Uh, but this one's just very vibrant, very bright. Um, and it looks really pretty when you pair it. Like I think it would be pretty paired with um, a super bean I'm about to talk about, which is pink cashmere. It would look pretty with the Super Bowl's double white, which I'm about ready to talk about. Uh, it's just a really beautiful pink. Okay guys, so now we're gonna be getting into some Super Bells varieties. There are six brand new ones that we tried this past year. And for those of you who have been watching our videos for uh, a while, you know that I've had kind of a love-hate relationship with Super Bells. We've tried them so many times and uh, I think I'm doing something wrong. Like I love the Super Bells and they just don't love me back. But this past year we had phenomenal luck. And I don't know if it's just these varieties are extra awesome. Maybe they're just, they're improving um, them all the time. Like some of these, two of these are improved varieties from older ones that have better performance and all of that. But we planted them in the ground in containers and just had the best time. So it's very encouraging. This first one is the Super Bells Double White, which is a very bright, pure white, fully double flower, beautiful, beautiful plant. I had these in a couple different containers and in the hay racks and they just were gorgeous. They just uh, formed these like medium sized kind of balls full of flower. Uh, they weren't like super aggressive. I feel like they're really good players with other things. You can uh, tuck them in with other things and they will uh, do really well and not take over but I love a double flower and it's nice to have a double white like that that performed like that one did. I also felt like the plants were really well branched, um, just very dense and they almost had kind of a, a lacy-ish texture. They looked very like delicate without being delicate. The next three Super Bells are actually doubles as well. There's the Super Bells Double Smitten Pink, which I love the color of. Uh, it's like a pink bicolor. There's a light pink on the outside, deep pink throat, fully double flower. They have kind of a rosebud looking appearance and they would remind you of the Ringo double pink rose which we planted a lot of this past year they kind of I want to call them strawberry crush I don't know why 
but it's just what I want to call them. And it's just such a pleasant color. And I just, I used them in a container near the chicken coop, which I don't think I have pictures of, but they were with some pink geraniums and some uh, sky blue super It was a beautiful mix. And then we had them in the hay racks and we also planted them in the ground, which super bells on the website, they recommend not planting in the landscape because super bells typically want to dry out between waterings. They need super great drainage, which we don't actually have out there. But I thought, well, what the heck, may as well try it. Uh, we put them in the ground. <laughs> These particular ones, I forgot to water, planted them, just moved on to the next project, forgot to water them, forgot to tell anybody that I had planted them so they didn't get dripped in to our irrigation system. And when I went out there the next day, they were like, like shriveled up and they looked horrid and I felt horrible. I got them a deluge of water at that point and they just snapped right back and they grew beautifully the rest of the season. So maybe that's the, the, the formula, just stress them out really, really severely uh, and then deluge them with water. Uh, but that's what these got and they were absolutely gorgeous in the landscape and it's something I will definitely repeat. I had them planted um, sort of by some back and black sedum and there's a, a procumbens blue spruce so that like soft icy blue with the soft pink it was just a beautiful combination love that flower the next super bells double is the vintage coral which has got such a unique color it's like a smoky amber mauve coral <laughs> so good at color descriptions I do know that sometimes they can take a little bit more of a purple vibe on uh, but they do have a very dense well-branched growth habit I had them in hay racks this past year and then also in some containers in another part of our garden along with the uh, Bermuda Beach improved super tunia and they actually held their own for quite a long time right toward the end of the season you could still see flowers popping out but not as many um, as the super tunia so it was something that I, I learned from there I just wondered with the super tunia Bermuda Beach having the growth habit that it, I knew from before it had improved I thought maybe they would be a little bit more compatible but they were for most of the season I was really um, I was happy with the growth with both of them and the next one was a surprising one to me as well it was the double redstone which you guys know that typically I don't go for red flowers in the garden because I use so many like pinks and pastel colors that red just is a little bit jarring so I put this one at the very end of our hay rack project because I thought, well, as long as it's at the very end, it won't jar my eye too much because I won't see it quite as much. And I think the plant knew that, that I was trying to do that to it. And so it just performed like crazy. If you like red flowers in the garden, this one is definitely one to try. But I do have to say there's like a gold margin around the outside of the petal. And that softened the whole look of the, the red to me. Like it's not like a fire engine red or a really hot red. It was a very kind of uh, muted understated red. And I thought it was really beautiful. It was either that or the performance of the plant just blew me away so much that the color didn't matter as much, kind of like with the uh, orchid, Super Tunia. Um, but it was just a beautiful performer and one that I highly recommend. The last two Super Bells are both improvements on older varieties. So there's the Super Bells Pink Improved, Super Bells Blue Improved. Both earlier bloom times, both better growth habit, better branching, more flowers. And I have to say, so the blue, we only planted in the hay racks and it performed great flowers all season. The pink, I decided, because they came in those eco pots, you know, that Proven Winners has, which are compostable pots, um, I decided to plant the extra Super Bells Pink Improved in the ground in the pots and that was a really good decision they were absolutely gorgeous they kind of were these like little boop 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 like i could have even planted them closer together so that there wasn't space between them but they just formed these beautiful petite mounds of bright pink color and the containers just like didn't hurt anything at all and it was kind of an experiment uh, for the containers as well because I thought well if super bells don't want as much water maybe planting them straight in their containers uh, they will be saved from as much water <laughs> like they'll be shielded from it as opposed to the other ones I had planted without containers but they all performed pretty well container or not but I was really happy it was easy just to pop those containers down and skip that step um, you know in a more wet climate they would probably break down faster I don't think they necessarily recommend that you plant your pots in or your plants in those pots um, because it, I think it can take two seasons for them to break down but um, the fact that you can pop those pots off and put them in your compost pile is pretty awesome that was kind of a side trail trail uh, side note there but I was happy with the performance of both of those okay so now there's two super beanas. there's the pink cashmere which was such a great performer so we had it in hay racks in the urns next to our dumpster and then also in the ground and they just have the most soft 
beautiful pink, almost skewing like a white pink. You know, every year I say that we need to grow more superbena, and we have. We've started doing much more in-ground planting of it, much more of it in our containers because they are so low maintenance. They do not require any spraying from us because they're not affected by budworms. Um, they don't require pruning. They just go for it. Now the pink cashmere, the the size of the blooms are massive. And I feel like the growth habit will rival some of even the biggest ones, like the whiteout superbena. Those get pretty massive. These grew really, really big as well. And there's also the uh, Superbena Cherry Burst Improved. So an improvement on an older variety. And this one kind of has a candy cane look to it. Um, it's another one of those that I was unsure of because it's got the kind of red and white. But I noticed that some of the flowers had like skewed a little bit pink. So it softened the look of the plant. Um, and definitely the red in them is a little bit of a softer color. Here comes Russell. What are you doing? Can you see him yet? <laughs> Come here. You want some loves real quick? I think the description on that one says that they are a striped, like a cherry red and peach, but it was more of a, I didn't get peach from it. I got a little bit more of a white color from it. That could be different based on your location, but neither of them require deadheading either. Just a really easy, uh, low maintenance annual. The next one is a new Biden's called Campfire Marshmallow, a bright, pure white, self-cleaning flower with a little yellow center, and they set very little seeds, so they're very productive in the flower department. And you know, our hay racks were maybe like mm, this level or so, and I actually preferred the look of this plant down in the landscape. I look, like looking down on it better because it has an upright growth habit. So I was able to see more of the flowers when you stand over it, but it would be a really good filler or even thriller, depending on how tall you want your thriller to be, in a container that you've got set on the ground somewhere or in the center of a uh, hanging basket where you've got other things kind of taking on that trailing roll. Uh, but this one in the ground, we had it behind our chicken coop was just phenomenal. And I was amazed by how much it grew because they were so little. When we planted them and they grow roughly 14 inches tall, I would beg to differ on that. I'd say they get a little taller than that. And then about 20 inches wide. They definitely got that wide. They really liked their location. They got sun until I want to say mid afternoon and then they were protected in the late afternoon evening time but they just were a wonderful plant. And the pollinators really were attracted to them as well. The next one is part of a series that I'm just recently familiar with. It's the James Britannia, and this one's called Safari, <laughs> Safari Dusk. Russell, can you lay down? Lay down, behave yourself. Here, why don't you lay on that cushion? There's also Safari Sky and Safari Dawn, but I feel like, and maybe I just was more, I was paying closer attention to this one. I feel like this one had the best performance. We had this one in a hay rack and we had it in the ground behind the chicken coop and it was equally as awesome in both locations. The good thing about this one is that uh, it doesn't really want a lot of fertilizer. It likes high heat and it likes low water and no dead hitting. Like it's one of those, you just set it and forget it sort of plants. So, yeah for the most part. <laughs> Side note, it's also really uh, tolerant of high humidity, which is not something we deal with here, but I know a lot of you deal with that, but the color was just phenomenal and you couldn't even see leaves. It was just so full of that beautiful, just like pure lavender color. But each of the flowers has like a yellow orange throat, which gives it a bit of a glow quality. So the flowers pop. Then there's another improved variety. It's the Sensatia Coconut Nemesia or Nemesia. We say Nemesia up here. I think it's Nemesia properly, right? I don't know. Either way, this one is amazing. So I used to think of these, and I think maybe the older varieties were just more of a cool season flower, and they would fizzle out in the summer heat. This one it keeps going no matter what the temperature is and what kind of sun it's in. We had ours planted in a couple locations, full sun. We had about, uh, I wanna say 10-ish days, week to two weeks of 106, 105 degree temperatures. Didn't bother this plant at all. It just kept on blooming. And it's a very bright pure white with a yellow throat. It was just a really good performer. I feel like this is a really good option or replacement maybe in some situations over pansies and violas. In our area at least it gets so hot in the summertime that pansies and violas fizzle out. So if that's what you're used to using in your spring containers then you have to swap them for summer stuff and that's fun to do too but sometimes you want to plant something in the spring and just have it go through the end of the year this is a great one for that the next one is also an improvement it's a terenia or wishbone flower called catalina pink and i have to say that this one has performed better than any of the other terenias that i have grown in the past in fact i kind of stopped growing them because i just thought this isn't giving back enough <laughs> in you know i could be planting something different in these spaces for more color but this one 
did well. We planted it in the hay rack, which this is one that wants a, typically a little bit more shade, and it's a good option for a trailing plant with some color for a shadier spot. We planted it out in the hay racks, which gets full morning sun, this particular hay rack, but then we have a red point maple nearby that sort of shaded it, dappled sun throughout the hottest part of the day, but then it would get nailed again at the end part of the day with that hot, hot sun, and it did really well. We also had it near our chicken coop, um, in a container that got shade most of the time and it had color most of the time. Uh, the thing about the Trenia for me personally, when it sheds its old blooms, it is self-cleaning, but the little thing, like the little, mm, can't think of the word, that holds the flowers in, they're a lighter color than the leaves. So they're a little bit more like a chartreuse green rather than the, you know, the deep green of the leaves. And I don't really prefer that contrast. So it's one that I do feel like is better than the older Trenias and a really good option for a shadier spot. Um, and if, you know, you want that variation of green, that's a great one. The next one excites me because it's the one that the pollinators liked the best. It's the Improved Whirlwind White Scavola. Of all the bright colored flowers out there, I mean, this hay rack uh, was loaded, loaded with honeybees all the time. It just, it surprised me. I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't even think of Scavola as being one that would attract the, uh, the bees like this one did. Um, the thing I noticed about this one, because I did plant it in the ground as well, uh, it, it took a while to kind of fill in when it, I used it in the landscape. So when you're using it as a mass plant, it takes a little bit longer than like a Supertunia Mini Vista White or a um, Snow, uh, what's it? It's not white out. Snowdrift, Supertunia Vista Snowdrift. Those are like huge balls of white all season long. So if you want a lot of white coverage right away, that's the way to go. Um, Scovola stays a little bit more petite. It can handle more shade. So it's really great to pop in in little spaces. Maybe not as good for like whole drifts because I noticed the center of the plant maintained a lot. You could see a lot more green, a lot more of the leaves for more of the season. It eventually filled in, um, but I just noticed that being a thing because I had it right next to some, to some Supertunias, which really isn't fair to do to a, to a scovola, I think. It was wonderful in the hay racks though. I just loved it. It was always in color, performed beautifully, and it didn't um, need maintenance from us. No spraying, no trimming. All right, just a few more. So there's a color blaze coleus called cherry drop. It would remind you of the chocolate drop, but it's more on the red side. And we had it in hay racks and we also had it in the ground. The thing I love about, well, all color blaze coleus is they can han handle a lot of sun or they can handle a lot of shade. And I had it planted with, Let's see, what did I have around it? There was Golden Dreams, Newly Noir, Cherry Brandy, Lime Time, El Brido. Did I have any others over there? I just had a whole mass of coleus plant and it was gorgeous. Um, but the nice thing about the Cherry Drop is it stays shorter and it does more of kind of a spilling habit. So if you want it in a container, it's really good for that. Um, and it stays shorter in the landscape as well. You know, some of those others like Golden Dreams is probably the most massive coleus I've ever grown. It does take supplemental water if you've got it in a sunny spot uh, more than any of the other color blaze, but it can get big. And Wicked Witch is also a really nice one. I love that one. But, you know, all of those other color blades get really tall, so it's nice to have a short option. This is the last one from my list that I personally grew, and then I've got two more that I'm hoping to grow this next year. But I can only say that I half grew this because uh, of where I planted it. So it's the Double Delight Apple Blossom Begonia. Color perfection, especially for a shady spot. I planted them in all the window boxes around the house with Elbrido coleus, uh, with some uh, sweet potato vine, like the, what was it called? Medusa, does that make sense? Maybe not. I uh, can't remember all the plants I had in there. And they were beautiful and they were full, but those begonias got completely gobbled up. Now I could have kept on it and kept trimming the plants, but sometimes I just kind of like chalk it up to a learning experience and think, okay, I'm not gonna plant those things so close to one another again, because I don't want that kind of maintenance through the season. I wanna, to learn the plant's growth habits and then kind of plant them in a way that they'll all, you know, cohabitate peacefully without me having to intervene. But they did get smothered out about halfway through the season. We enjoyed them for that first part though, and the color is beautiful. The last two, like I said, I did not get my hands on these for this past season, but I'm hoping to grow them this next one. There's another begonia called Selenia. Yeah, Selenia apricot. And it's another beautiful color. I think begonias would be a wonderful one to do solo in a container and just pop them around in shadier spots. And they like low water and in shady spots, they dry out less 
quickly so or less frequently so you don't have to water them as much and so I think that would be a great one to just put on its own and let them just kind of like do their thing and not have to compete with something else the very last one on my list is the boldly white improved geranium so you can see the boldly reds right behind me if the boldly whites perform as good as these or even better I would be so happy geraniums are just one of those wonderful plants that are versatile house plants inside outside um, of course if it's really cold outside they don't survive the winter but I dig a lot of mine up and pot them up put them in the greenhouse and winter them over and I, I love the versatility of that type of plant I also love their bloom time I mean, these have been in bloom since I planted them I don't even remember what month that was and they've been in bloom the entire time and they've dropped some leaves there if you get close to them they're looking a little spindly because they kind of do a leaf drop and then they'll push more but they're always in color gotta love that and you guys that is it for my list today this is not a full list I mainly wanted to focus on the ones that I had experience with so we will link the full list down below if you want to learn more it's just fun to kind of reflect on what happened this past year and what I've learned about these plants and then share that with you and a great time to plan you know plan for this next year we've already been planning in fact we've ordered a lot of uh, our annuals for this next year there it's already done so you'll be seeing a lot of these show up in our garden again this year and we do plan on putting together another couple videos one for perennials and one for shrubs um, new for next year so that you can start thinking about some of those we've had a chance to plant a number of those as well so we will come uh, up with those here shortly and then we will also share 2025 annuals and other plants um, as soon as we're given the green light to do so so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one